what's going on everybody thank you for joining me again tonight uh or to this morning depending on where you live uh this is roaming prepper channel i'm your host pete and today i want to talk about what would happen if this situation came up what situation is it and how does it work well i will explain to you in a moment Okay, so what situation am I talking about? Well, what if there was an electoral college tie in this year's election? A lot of people are putting that out on the internet, and people don't understand the way the Constitution works, and as a result, they don't understand that there's already a system in place. So let's break it down. So the electoral college assigns so many electoral votes per state. It's based on two things, the number of senators, every state has two, and then the number of representatives in the House of Representatives. Their total of 538 divided among the 50 states to reflect their proportion or their percentage of the overall population of the U.S. So, for example, New York State, I believe, has 27 electoral votes. Two represent the senators, the remaining 25 are the number of seats it has in the House. Texas has 40, two senators, 38 House members. I think California has 54. I, I can't remember exactly. Again, two senators, 56 representatives in the House. So the way it works in almost every state is if you win the majority of the plurality of votes in your state, you get all the electors. But not every state is like that. The Constitution was set up such that each state could divide their electors if they felt it was different. Nebraska, for instance, has three districts. Omaha, which is an urban area, a suburban area around Omaha, and then the rest of the state, which is largely rural. So you could win Omaha and lose the other two, and you get one of the three electoral votes. You could win one in the rural and lose the other two and you get two the other person gets one and so on um maine is different maine has two districts one around portland and then the rest of the state you can win portland you get a vote one elector you win the other half the the remainder of the state the rural area you get one elector and then whoever gets the most popular vote gets the remaining two they have a total of four so one for portland one for District 2, and then two for whoever gets the most votes. So hypothetically, you could win Portland, but have gotten just enough popular vote that not only did the other person win the rural areas, but they get the two bonus electors. That's how it goes. So it is conceivable, depending on a combination of total states or some of these odd states that split their electors, that we could have a 269 to 269 tie in the Electoral College. Now, the Electoral College was originally put in place back in the day to ensure that certain sworn in and designated people would cast a vote on behalf of their state. And the way it's supposed to be is if the state voted for X or Y, the electors would honor X or Y, with the exception of the ones that split by region or by a subdivision. So what if there's a tie? The way polarization has been, it is absolutely conceivable there could be a, a tie between the two candidates. So what would happen then? Neither, In other words, neither one would get over the 270 electoral votes required to win. Well, now what? Well, oddly enough, there are two safety protocols, and they've actually been used before. I don't remember if it was President Madison, but they are in place. And they've been used before. So let me explain. Let's say there's a tie. Right now we have Kamala, Kamala Trump, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump. They're running against each other. Let's say they split and they get a tie. So what happens next is after the new Congress is sworn in, in January, the new House of Representatives will elect the new president. Now, this was done to prevent chaos. It was also meant to show that 
because the House of Representatives typically shows the will of the people at that time, the president would reflect roughly the will of the people. But here's the caveat. Each state gets one vote. So there's only 50 votes for the president. Ergo, there's a tie. They go to the House of Representatives. All the new representatives come in. Each state caucuses among themselves and talks to the governor of their state. And they say, okay, we're voting for Trump or we're voting for Harris. But now California, instead of getting 54 electoral votes, they get one vote for the state. Texas has 40, but they get one vote for the state. Now, right now, the states leading more Republican than Democrat or red versus blue leans toward red. So hypothetically, 27 electors or 27 designees could vote for Trump and make Trump president. This allows the smaller states to have an equal say as the big states in the event there's a tie. And the philosophy behind that was if there's an electoral tie, clearly the people are divided. Ergo, we don't want the small states to have no voice. And it's meant to give a balance so we don't become like the United States of LA or United States of Houston or something like that. But here's the real kicker. The vice president is, does not follow the president. The Senate, the new Senate, votes for the vice president. Each senator gets one vote. Well, each state has two senators. Ergo, there are 100 votes total for vice president. So each of the 50 states gets one vote for president. Then the Senate will place their votes for a vice presidential candidate. It is absolutely theoretically possible. The Republicans flip the Senate, the Democrats flip the House, and they flip enough of them. Now keep in mind, just because they flip the House in numbers doesn't mean they flip the states, right? For example, they may gain four seats in New York and two seats in California, and they would be in the majority in the House, but California still only gets one vote. They would literally have to get the majority in a red state to turn that state blue. So hypothetically, we could have a scenario where, say, the House votes Trump, but the Senate stays in control of the Democrats and they vote for, I don't know, um, Tim Waltz. Now you have Trump and Waltz as president and vice president. It's absolutely a possibility. Is it likely? Probably not. Usually the Electoral College is very definitive, but it has happened in the past, in the 1800s, where the Electoral College at the time got tied. Ergo, that vote went to the House. And in this case, I believe in that case, the House and the Senate were both majority led by one of the two parties. I don't remember which direction it went. Um, and again, back then, it was like the Federalists, the Whigs, the Republicans and Democrats were not fully formed the way they are today. But in any case, I don't believe so. But in any case, that's how it panned out. So yes, so the Electoral College, 270 votes, that's president and vice president go together to the White House. If they tie, it goes to the House. Each state gets one vote in the House. And then the Senate votes for the vice president separately, and each senator gets one vote. So you get 50 votes for the president and 100 votes in the Senate for the vice president, and you could conceivably have a mixed party in the White House. Now, I don't know if there actually has been a mixed party in the White House. The times this has happened, it pretty much went one way or the other. But just so you know, so the question is, will people freak out if there's an electoral tie? They probably will, because people are stupid and they don't understand the way our constitution and our government works. But you think about it, it's kind of brilliant. Because the Electoral College should reflect the overall will of the people. It's weighed both two votes per state in the Senate to keep all the states equal voice, and then by proportion of population. But if it's split that evenly, it goes to the House, the newly elected House, which would reflect the new will of the people at that time. Thought I'd uh, introduce you to that concept. It's very interesting. Um, anyway, read up more about it. I may have missed misspoken on a couple of points, but that's pretty much how it works. So folks, be good, be cool, and remember, even if there's a tie, there's still a system in place 
to move the country forward on the other end. It may be chaotic. We may not like it, but it's there and there's rules to go with it. In any case, you guys be good, be safe. God bless out there. Keep out of trouble. And I will see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.